Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior. Well, I thank God for taking me to work last night and bringing me back home this morning. You know, I pray that he gives me the strength to keep my eyes open and to be able to say exactly what he wants me to say, you know. So I give God the glory. So we're going to continue from... Uh, where we stopped the last time okay so um we're doing first samuel one to first samuel uh chapter one we did from one to five huh so today we'll continue from verse six so um and then the scripture says that but who hannah but unto hannah he gave a worthy portion for he loved her. For unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion for he loved her. her Hannah husband, as I said, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Elkanah. Elkanah was married to Hannah and, and Pinana. And he had two wives, Hannah and Pinana. Hannah was barren because God and shut her womb. Pinana was very fruitful. She had children for her husband, for their husband. But Pinana did not like Hannah because she felt she knew that the husband favored Hannah more than her. And Hannah was very sad because Pinana would always say things and provoke her because of her being barren. Tell her things to make her feel less than a person because she was barren. So scripture is saying that, but unto Hannah he gave a word of portion for he loved her. Which means that the husband every year, as I said, the last during the last time the last video I made once a year the husband will go to sacrifice unto Jehovah unto God Almighty because the husband loved the Lord he loved God so when they went for this when they go for the sacrifice he will he will share offering between his wife and you know the offering between his wife his two wives and his children so for Pinana and her children he would give them portions, okay? But for Hannah, scripture said that he gave her a worthy portion, okay? He gave her a worthy portion, which means he gave her the best part of it. He gave her more. She was favored, okay? She was highly favored by her husband. And this caused the other wife to notice. So that was why she never liked Hannah, okay? So the scripture went on to say that, and her adversary also provoked her soul for to make her fright because the Lord has shut up her womb. So verse 6 says that her uh, and her adversary, her adversary was the other wife. So I went and then I defined the word adversary and this is what it says. A person who opposed or fight against another an opponent, an enemy, okay? So uh, an adversary, somebody who fight against another person, they, they oppose the person, they don't like the person. So that was what uh, happened. So the other wife became an enemy to the other wife because of what was going on in the home, you know? And scripture went on to say that, Every year, every year, the husband will go every year to offer sacrifice. And every year, he will share offerings between his wife. And every year, he will give Hannah the best part of the offering. And every year, he will just give portion to uh, 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 Penana and her children. But And that caused Penana to feel so hurt because she knew that she was not loved and favored like how Hannah was loved and favored. She was loved but not equal to Hannah. And so every year this thing happened. And the scripture made us do happen that every year 
around that time, Pinana would keep provoking Hannah, keep telling her, making her to feel bad because she didn't have children. And so when the uh, scripture went on to say that because of this, Hannah lost her appetite. Hannah was not eating. Hannah was not drinking. Hannah was not doing anything. She would just sit and grieve and grieve. And she did it to the extent that her husband noticed her grieving. So this year came when they went to do the sacrifice, you know, as usual, he shared the offering, gave her the best part, the most favored part, you know, the most worthy part of the offering. But yet and still, she was not happy. She was sitting there. She was not even eating. And her husband looked at her and said, why are you so sad? Why are you, have you lost your joy? Why are you not eating? You know, am I not more to you than 10 sons? Am I, am I not more to you than a lot of children? So this was what her husband asked her. I said, am I not enough for you? Why are you so sad? You understand? So but Hannah was sad. And as the scripture went on, she left the table and she went to the temple. But I will stop right there. And then I want us to just look at this part. You know, this part. This part where her husband asked her, am I not more to you than 10 sons okay this is what uh happened the devil what the devil does is this he calls us to focus on that one thing that is not working in our life he calls us to focus on that one thing that we do not have in our life he calls us to forget about everything else that is working and he wants us to just focus on that thing that is not working the devil is the adversary okay the devil is our adversary so he the devil does that sometimes he uses people he people who will avail themselves to him like how you see the two wives the other wife allow herself to be used by the devil to torment the other wife to bring pains you know on the other wife because she did not have children because she could not bear children you understand so this is what the devil does he calls us to just focus on that thing we don't have even though everything else may be working even though you 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 have a home you have children you have your husband but maybe maybe there is something maybe there is somebody who's sick maybe there is some kind of sickness that you have and you have been believing god and your healing has not come yet the devil will cause you to focus on that sickness and not glorify god because you are focusing on that one thing that is not working or maybe you have a beautiful home a beautiful job but because you don't have a husband the devil will want you to focus on that one thing to say oh you're not married you don't have a husband and forget about everything else that is working in your life because maybe you have a husband maybe you have a home but you don't have children the devil wants you to forget about everything else that god is doing and focus on that on that one problem that maybe you that you don't have a child you understand because you don't have a car you don't have big cars you don't i mean this this is the trick of the enemy to cause us to forget about everything else that is working you see this lady her husband loved her he gave her everything you always gave her a worthy portion which means he met her needs her meet her needs were met he loved her he showered her with love but because she could not have a child scripture says she was so sad she didn't have appetite even the food and good things around her that she had she could not enjoy these things she could not enjoy these things because she was focused on that one problem and this is what is happening to us nowadays we forget about everything that god almighty has done we forget about everything that is working in our life and that one thing that has not worked for us we focus on that thing and because of that we lost our joy we lost our peace some people have even gone to the extent of of putting life on a whole you know they just live waiting for the day that prayer will be answered they don't want to enjoy their life anymore they don't enjoy anything anymore when they wake up they think you're nothing the day this prayer will be answered their mind everything is only on that one thing that they want to see happy and because of that they have husband they will not be happy with their husband they have children they're not happy with the children they're not happy with all the provisions that God bring in their life because they are focusing on that one thing I don't know what that one thing is for you that God has not given to you yet you see and so God is asking us like the husband asks his wife he asks his wife he said am I not more important to you don't I worth more to you than 10 sons than than children so God is asking us today is he not enough 
Isn't he worth more than that thing you really want to happen in your life that hasn't happened yet? God is asking us this question. Is he not worth more? Is he not worth more than that child that you want so bad? Is God not worth more than that husband you want so bad? Is God not worth more than that wife that you want so bad? How about that job, that, that dream job that you want so bad? That promotion that you want so bad? How about those things, you know, that you're really desiring that have not come to pass? Is God not more important? You know, the devil, the adversary will cause us to flee, to worry. Scripture tells us that they say that in her adversary also provoke her soul for to make her fright because the Lord has shut up her womb. The devil wants you to sin. The devil wants you to do the very thing that God has said we should not do. If you read the scripture in Psalm 37, 1, Psalm 37, 1 tells us that fret not thyself fret not thyself because of evil doers neither be thou envious against the work of iniquity okay so to to, to worry to, to fret is to worry the devil wants us to worry what god has said that we should not worry scripture keep telling us not to worry he said don't worry because you cannot by worrying you cannot change any situation by wor worry will not change any situation scripture is telling us that we should not flee ourselves we should not worry ourselves because of evil doers don't worry yourself because of that person that the devil is using to put it in your face that you are lacking something Okay, that person who have made themselves available to the enemy to hurt you, to bring pain in your life. Stop worrying about that person. Stop worrying about that problem. Stop worrying about your situation. You have someone that is more valuable than that thing that you want. And believe me, if you have, once you have that person, you have everything because he's a just and a fair God. And he will make sure to give you everything that you desire in due season. Scripture tells us that the woman was barren. She was not barren because she had a curse on her, like liars and people would tell you that, oh, this person don't have this thing because they curse, because they have a swear behind them, because God is angry. The God was not angry with her. Scripture said that the Lord shut her womb. That's why she was barren. Okay, now the enemy, instead of her just being in that, just worshiping God, and just being content, and just being happy, and just praising God for what is working and enjoying the things around her that work, she was sitting down, she lost her appetite, and she was worrying because of that one thing that was not working in her life. This is what the devil is doing to us. He causes us to just worry about things that are not working and forget to enjoy all the good things that are working in our lives. You see that? And this is what the enemy does. This is what he does. This is what he does. Isaiah 26, 3 to 4 says that thou will keep in, in perfect peace who mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. God will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind on him. How do I handle such situation where everything else is working, but there is one thing that is not working, and I'm worrying about that one thing that is not working? Keep your mind on God. Start to read your Bible. Place scriptures in your home. Meditate in the scripture. Meditate in the things of God. Meditate on the word of God. Praise God. Thank God for the things that are working around you. Thank God for what you have. Be grateful to God. Have a thankful heart. And when you start to do that, the Bible said that God will keep you in perfect peace. Okay? He will keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stay on Him. And when you do that, you are showing to God that you trust Him. Listen to the scripture, Isaiah 26, 3 to 4. Thou will keep Him in perfect peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, who mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Okay? It proves to God that you trust him when you keep your mind on God. I pray in the name of Jesus that every problem that you are worrying about, everything that is not working in your home, in your marriage, in your life, children or whatever, anything that is not working, I pray that God will take your mind off those things and cause you to be 
focus on him because when you are focused on God he will keep you in perfect peace and that will show to God that you will, that you trust in him and they that trust in God scripture tells us that they will never be put to shame because you trust in God because you're keeping your mind on God my sister my brother my child God will answer your prayer everything you desire from God that thing that is taking long it will surely come to pass even in Jesus name we pray amen so we're gonna stop right here for now we will continue as I said I want to take my time and go through this so I pray that God will give us the grace to keep our mind on him we will not focus on what we don't have but we will praise God for the things that are working and the things that we have so I pray that God bless you in Jesus' name, amen.